Welcome to Stage Sessions. My name is Todd Birdsong. I'm the director of the Clemens Fine Arts Center. And today our guest is Glenn Hall. Glenn is a local photographer and filmmaker. Uh, he and I have known each other for several years, um, been friends for quite some time. And let's all just welcome him to the show today. Hi, Glenn. Thanks, Todd. Hey. <laughs> Good to be here. That's, I'm glad to have you. Um, so out of all the years that we've known each other, one of the things that, that I, I've never asked or never thought about even asking, it's probably an assumption on my part, is are you from here? Are you from the Paducah area? Yes, um, I grew up here. Yeah. Uh, I am a child of the um, 50s uh, uranium plant uh, families. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So in your family, are there any, is there anybody else, like your parents or siblings, anybody else that has more kind of an artistic slant, has, has some arts background or arts I, interest? I think, it's, you know, not, nothing real serious. I think several people just sort of touched on, on some things, you know. Um, yeah, pretty much that's it, yeah. Nothing. So then for you, what, what was that? Can you remember, like, what was the moment that, like, the f the switch flipped for you, and you were like, "Hey, I'm either I either am a photographer, like I'm I'm a serious photographer now, or yeah, or I, you know, I know this is, <clears throat> I know this is what I want to do." I think probably I started out painting and drawing, and that was my passion. That's where I really wanted to to go. I wanted to be a painter, you know, and uh, the more I got into it. And I started studying at MSU, and uh, um, it it became frustrating. I couldn't capture quick enough what I was seeing, and the process was was slow for me, you know. So gradually, I think just picking up a camera and then suddenly realizing I can capture things uh, quicker, you know, I'm seeing things quicker. Then that process kind of took over eventually. Uh, at some point, I kind of combined the two, you know, painting and photography. But um, the photography, I, need, I just like that immediate, you know, especially when Polaroid came along. I wanted that immediate um, end result. So that right, was, right, right. Because you know, I was seeing like faster than I could like draw or paint. I, I, I was, I just didn't have the patience for that. Right. <laughs> But I love it now. I'm still working on it, but yeah. so yeah. So you're talking about a time like analog days. Yes. So you're talking about film. Oh yeah. Um, and so we were talking about combining um, that your your painting and drawing with photography. What I'm assuming, because of my experience with photography, is you're talking about alternative processes. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you're like platinum printing and there gum was, uh, prints see, and some. Um, what is it, the blue cyan, the, cyanotype, yeah, right. that type of stuff. And then I was doing a lot of um, hand coloring as well. Um, so I sort of introduced like a whole portfolio of hand colored photographs, so, and I enjoyed that, so that. So you had a few years, if I remember correctly, in Nashville, Tennessee. Yes. And you were doing a lot of commercial work. In fact, you, from what I remember, you had a lot of, uh, country music, celebrities. Yeah. Um, talk about that just a little bit. Uh, that was probably what um, kind of dr drove me um, visually and creatively. You know, always like the music was a big, you know, influence. Um, when I was studying photography at SIU, um, I was putting together a portfolio and it was primarily black and white and hand colored. And I couldn't get there fast enough to Nashville. I, just, I wanted to work in the music industry. Of course, it's pretty competitive at the time, and um, I just took, put put a book together and started knocking on doors and bugging people and calling people. I had a, I really researched uh, thoroughly, kind of a list of people I wanted to work with and pursue, and I just kept bugging them and bugging them, and then you know finally, uh, my goal was kind of like to have shot. Um, maybe my first major label by the time I was 30. And so I was able to get in with MCA Universal Records. Simon Levy gave me a shot with a new artist and brought me in, which was rare because they hardly even venture out to, you know, new photographers. 
So that was a big experience right there, and that kind of set the set the groundwork and set you know set me running. So you remember who that artist was? Uh, Lionel Cartwright. Yeah. I don't know who that yeah. is. <laughs> I, I did two albums with him. It was pretty cool. Um, but then, yeah, some of them didn't make it. Some of them, right. some of them did. I, they kind of, when I came in, you know, I'm a new artist, new photographer. So they would pair me with new artists, new musicians. So at the time, new artists were like Toby Keith and Sammy Kershaw, Shania Twain. So I was working with them, doing projects with them. Uh, some of them went on to, you know, right. uh, bigger pastures. Some of them didn't. Um, Toby Keith, he was a he was a new artist at the time that I, I shot his first um, promo stuff. Yeah, that's cool. So, so uh, there's an image that I remember uh, of you. You took an image of Bill Monroe. Yes. Right. Yeah. Is there? What's the story behind that? Uh, while I was in Nashville, um, some of the connections I had uh, paired me up with uh, Rolling Stone uh, to do editorial shoots from you know from Nashville when they were featuring artists in Nashville. So they were doing a story on called Mentors, and um, they had got Chris Hillman um, involved, and so his mentor was Bill Monroe. So they contacted me to shoot Chris Hillman and Bill Monroe. So we uh, I scouted out the, not the, it was, at the time the rhyming wasn't working, it wasn't in, mm -hmm. so we had to shoot on the stage of the new Grand Ole Opry out in the Opry land. <laughs> of course, you know, the photos didn't look like we were at Opry land, but, uh, <laughs> but that experience of working with Bill Monroe and Chris Hillman, you know, was just like, wow, that's, you know, I couldn't believe I was on stage with them, you know? Oh yeah. And yeah right. So it's, it's all kind of like a dream now, but yeah, uh, that's that was, huge. yeah, it was, it was fun. You know, to... Um, so, here we are in the pandemic. Yeah. And, you know, so you're, you're a photographer, you're a professional photographer, and you've got all these clients. So even if it's a business client, you're, you're promoting, uh, let's, let's say you're doing something for maybe Paducah Bank. Mm -hmm. or, um, and regardless of really what it is, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one or a business, there's that element of personal interaction. There's right. always that with yeah. in, in almost anything in the arts. So n since we've been in the pandemic for over, over a year now, so how has that affected your process or your workflow? And, and, and I'm not just talking about the business part of it because uh, we all, I'm, yeah. I'm assuming it's affected that a lot, but what, just creatively, you know, what, how, is, how, how has things changed for you? <laughs> Um, you know, it, I, we had this conversation the other day. It's almost like I, I'm almost like because of the mask and having to wear a mask, I feel like I'm suffocating. You know, it's I feel like there's a there's this pressure when you're trying to work, and it just it, you can't relax. You know, it's there's like there's just something that's there that kind of so you're trying to fight beyond that to keep creative and keep positive and keep going with it. You know, and uh, after a while, I guess I kind of got used to it, but it still, it still kind of bugs me. And and it, and you don't, you can't really have the personal conversations you have because you just you get in, you get out, you know. So there's no time really for that. Uh, everything is real quick and, and, and structured. Before shooting, it, you know, you're still keeping a distance. You don't have that because, like I said, I was talking earlier too. Um, I had portraits projects scheduled in the studio and those take time and and you kind of build a trust and you build this relationship when you're working with someone and yeah with the COVID you, you know you're not allowed to do that really you don't have time you know and uh, <laughs> other than just like freaking out you're like can't wait for this person to leave you know <laughs> so like, then like project like personal projects then yeah let's talk about that just a little bit and how as did the pandemic did being did being kind of shut off from other people has did that open up another door you know like it did it close a window and open a door kind of thing i think it did really because the need to create is always there you know you it's almost like a 
you know, you just, it's like an addiction, you know, you've got to create something, you know, whether it's portraits or, uh, or you know, or just whatever. So, uh, and having a, you know, street photography background and, and uh, it's not just limited to one thing visually. I mean, you kind of, whatever kind of grabs you. So I think probably being, you know, I was able to get out in the woods, you know, and spend a lot of time in the woods. So I really started looking at places that I'd been, but I hadn't had a chance to really spend time, you know, focusing on them. So I have this pond and, and I'm always fascinated by the way everything decays, you know, as the seasons change, everything starts to decay, it fall the leaves and everything's decaying into the pond. So the textures that that starts to create as you as you spend time there and you watch it the process uh, just became really visually interesting to me so uh, I didn't want I wanted to go beyond just the basic landscape or just pretty pictures of leaves you know I wanted to really capture this this depth that you could see through you know through the water of this la these layers of decay that were happening and um, I don't know that I fully captured that yet, but it's still, you know, it's still been really fascinating to just focus on different times of day with the way the sun is. And so suddenly you're producing stuff and all of a sudden there's like a body of work, you know, you have from just, from just this. And it's, it, you know, I'm not worried whether anybody else gets it or enjoys it, you know, I'm just, you know, I feel like this, you know, um, solves that issue as far as being able to create or be able to, the process really is just more exciting to me, just the process to go through it. Uh, and it's also brought my painting back into play too. I've started experimenting with bringing um, actual art, you know, painting and uh, drawing back into the process of photography, so. Well, and that, <clears throat> that kind of connects, I was gonna follow up with that. Oh. Which was which was so you're a photographer filmmaker and you have this this drawing painting you know kind of beginnings and I was curious to know if if you had kind of either rekindled or discovered another type of outlet but if you're yeah so you're bringing back like what you used to do into yeah. what you're currently doing now and I'm trying to create more alternative processes with that as well I'm, I'm trying to experiment different ways with that i i have a dark room i've always had a dark room everywhere you know i've never not had a dark room <laughs> but the dark room um became just sort of storage space over the last you know dozen almost 10 years now i guess and i decided that during the covid you know it's, it's time to clean out you know yeah. <laughs> so i took the time to do that and so I've just taken, gutted the dark room, painted, you know, finished, gone back in and cleaned everything out. So now as I come back into that space, I'm looking to set up not just the enlarger and chemicals for processed prints. I'm looking to set it up more as an alternative process. And so like some small printmaking type, you know, ideas and like the salt printing or the mm -hmm. cyan type, that kind of stuff too. So I mm -hmm. want to start experimenting more with that. Well. So are you going to go back to, not, not to kind of nerd out yeah. on photography, but are you going to make large format film negatives or are you going to print digital negatives for some of your alternative processes? Uh, actually, what I'm doing is, is working with, uh, I'll have a digital image first uh -huh. and then um, I will print that on an eight by 10 transparency uh, clear transparency uh, pla a sheet of film, mm -hmm. I guess, yeah. Yeah. With a laser printer. Okay. Yeah. And then I'll use that as my negative or positive to sandwich with uh, the alternative processes, whether it's salt or cyanotype or, you know, okay. uh, what, you know, that's just part of it. And then incorporate some other things as well. But um, I still have. I'll probably start doing some, I have my four by five, so I'll probably still do some, you know, actual negatives and process the film. But as far as a quick digital film or negative right now, it's the Canon laser printer. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Um, so here we are again, you know, we're still in the pandemic. Um, you're kind of shut off, uh, you know, we're, or we're all kind of socially distanced. Um, are there any collaborative 
relationships that you've developed over this past year. I know that's really difficult to do considering, but I was just thinking about like, you know, you have Zoom and yeah. those kind of things. Um, I mean, are you doing anything that's long distance, that's more digital? Um, I'm work, I've been collaborating with uh, Shannon Simmons. I don't know if you know Shannon. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's an Shannon. awesome artist and creative person. And um, Shannon's come up with some great projects, and we've maintained, you know, a relationship on on working on some things. Um, there's a film, short film PSA he just created, and uh, I was I was able to help him with that for um, a COVID-related uh, collaboration with the area hospitals, which he he directed and wrote, and it's pretty sweet. It's really nice. That's nice, um, um, and that's fun to do. And well, what about your film work? I was, I was been meaning to ask you. I wanted to make sure that we got to some of that. Um, talk about some of the film projects. I had several projects coming up, but the last one was Dark Water, was the um, f the documentary on um, the commercial fishermen and the Asian carp, and I've still got that out in a couple of festivals and. Uh, it's still kind of circulating, but I'm not doing anything just yet. I'm still kind of waiting on, on getting back into doing some documentary stuff. But right now, everything's been like 30 second or 60 second short you know, type pieces. Right, you know? right. Yeah. I, I, it's funny that you mentioned that. Um, I, that's something that I've been doing for, for about the last year or two is yeah. creating these one minute or less mm -hmm. um, I, I, don't, I don't know what to call them either, to be honest. Yeah. Shorts seems to cover call them little vignettes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of what they are. Yeah. And I mean, and, and so you, you know, you find a moment, yeah. you document that, and then mm. I create uh, a short little soundscape of, of field recordings that I've done. Yeah. Um, and so, and, and, and I don't know, it's, it's oddly kind of satisfying. <laughs> it is. I, I enjoy doing that. <laughs> Um, and some of them kind of work. I still have some, you know, and that are just sitting there in Final Cut, you know, that I'm like, oh, well, I'm waiting on so something. I don't know what. But um, in the meantime, yeah, you know, you're trying to kind of still make a living and work and find work. Well, you know, while it's still in this process of COVID, yeah. Right. Yeah. So over the years, if you're thinking about all your projects, the, um, what's what's a favorite project and that that could be work it could be personal but like in like when you're thinking back about all the things that you've done like what's something that you're like yeah that was it that was the thing gosh i don't know if there's just one thing there's so many things that you know mean so many different you know uh things to you I, it's hard to say yeah i mean dark water was big because dark water was um, one of those projects where, I mean, it was kind of shot over six years probably, and it was one of those things where it pushed me to um, a level where I was like, man, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can do this, you know, and, but I'm thinking, no, I, I got to do this, you know, <laughs> and, but instead of trying to, you know, worry about it and just freak out about it, you know, I took on some other projects in between, you know, while I shot another documentary with Shannon called The Rotunda Project, and that was about the Coke plant and the musicians coming together. And that was, that was, a, that was one of the most in, incredible moments as far as getting all these musicians together. And we shot like five nights on till two or three in the morning, you know, in a row, five nights in a row, I think like that at the Coke plant. And it and it was all tracked live, and so we documented that process. That was pretty cool. Yeah, you had a, you had a lot of you yeah. had a lot of local folks. You had Josh Coffey. Yeah. Um, Sh Shana. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, Shana Goodman. Yeah. SG. Sorry, SG Goodman. Yeah. SG Goodman. Yeah. She's taken off. Uh, That's nice. Yeah. Um, lots of great people. Yeah. 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 That was a really nice film. I remember that. So that was fun. That was big. And then, uh, so then I shot a couple other short films in between that and then got back to finishing Dark Water. So it allowed me to kind of take a break from Dark Water, focus on some other things, and then, and then get back to Dark Water and not be so stressed to finally, and finally get it finished. <laughs> so whenever you complete a project, 
Um, and this could be even years later, or maybe maybe you're, you, while you're even still in process on a project. Um, is it easy for you to step back and look at it from a different perspective? Uh, you know, like separate the creator part of you from it to so you can kind of see it a little differently. Yeah, it's in, yeah, that's kind of fun. You never know. I mean, some things stay with you, and some things you kind of see fresh again. You know, you see with different eyes, which is kind of neat. Um, some things you don't ever want to see again, but, you yeah. know, but, um, <laughs> but I like that. I like being able to go back and look at it and you, and, and it, it, it's kind of nice if you can see something that maintains its longevity, I guess, in a way, you know, it still holds, you know, it's, right. it's space, but it's also interesting to see how, um, things date themselves and sort of create a whole different type of history with them. Uh, because I have a background in shooting fashion work when I was in Nashville as well. And a lot of the catalog type work, you know, for department stores and things like that. So it was real just straightforward work. But now looking at it 20 years later, it takes on this whole kind of artistic feel about it, you know. It's almost and, like uh, camp, yeah. maybe. Yeah, it's kind of wild. <laughs> so I, you know, I like produced a small book of those images, which was kind of neat. And so when you go back and look at them, it's... I like the fact that it has kind of changed, uh, and and now it's this historic little moment, you know. Right. So, and well, in talking about that, so you still styles change and culture changes, mm -hmm. but technology changes, and yeah. so a lot of your work yeah. can also be framed by by that as well. I mean, you know, we're talking about pixels and oh, yeah. megabytes and and all oh, that. Oh yeah. You know. Of course, coming from, I mean such an analog background i mean hundreds of thousands of you know processing film in the dark room and and uh, all those years and then when uh digital came in um i thought man i think i'm done you know <laughs> i think i'm done <laughs> and um and i kind of took a break from it for a while and uh but then i realized now i gotta i gotta make this you know i gotta make this happen so it took it took a couple of years to really get comfortable with digital because I fought it so, you know, so hard. I didn't, I just didn't want to do it. And then once I realized, you know, there's, there's no, it's just a tool. You just got to learn to do it, you know. Right. And, um, but it's something that I'm, I still learn, you know, more and more with it all the time. And then now, you know, since COVID, it's almost brought me back to going into more of an analog direction again. So I kind of want to explore that because i feel like i'm at a good place did you know working digitally and it's a there's a comfort level and now you want to kind of push that yeah right so is there do you have a preference for analog or digital i mean i, I agree i completely agree with you it's a tool in yeah. the box for sure yeah but if you you know if you were gonna if you were going to pick one, <laughs> if you were on a desert island yeah. and all you had well, was a film camera or a digital camera. If the film camera, you know, if I could shoot like Polaroid again, you know, because uh, that would be my preference, you know, shooting instant film, you know, again. Um, otherwise, I mean, sure, it's it's fun to like, you know, shoot digital and you can see the, you know, image immediately. And that that took some discipline as well, because I wasn't used to. I was so used to shooting film, you know, and you're like, you're in the moment when you're shooting film, you're not looking at the back of the camera, you know? And so I had to break myself of, you know, shooting and look and shoot, 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 look, look, you know, then get away from that. So you're just shooting. And then the only time you're looking is just maybe to check lighting or, you know, exposure or something. Right, some kind of reference. You know? Before that, we would shoot Polaroids, you know, you'd shoot a Polaroid and then you'd shoot film. <laughs> you know, to check lighting, but. Uh, do you find that you shoot more digitally than you do analog? I would assume that you do because it's just. Oh, yeah. It's just oh, yeah. easy. You know, it's yeah. It's just kind of uh, nature yeah, of the beast. It is. And, and mostly with clients now, I mean, they, you know, they're like, how soon can we get these images, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, Everybody yeah. is used to that speed now. So, and, and, of course, also yeah. because I think because of digital, everybody's also a photographer yeah. um, of, of, you know, to some, yeah. to, to some degree. Um, sometimes I think that 
um, and this is just my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that kind of lowers the bar for everybody else who does it on a professional level, because I think that the public kind of, um, I, I, th I think that they are willing to accept yeah, yeah. a little bit less than, you know, like, like what you could do. Yeah. And that's unfortunate too. I've seen that, you know, cause they're willing to just accept like, oh, it's okay. It's good. Yeah, it's good. You know? Yeah, and right. I'm like, ah, you know, those aren't the clients I want, you know. Right, right, you right. Know? Well, and I would think that your film background, because I yeah. feel the same way, is because because you have that, because you were in the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you just have a more discerning eye, and you have there's a feel about it. There's like this intangible kind it, of feel. Yeah, exactly. About it. And you and you like to work with people that understand that, and they get that, and they, you know. They, yes. And that's and when they do, you're excited. You're excited about working with those people, you know. Right, they right. They get but, it. And, you know, and so, you you know, you go the extra mile to, to make that happen. Uh, yeah, that re when that rapport happens, that is. It is. It, it's, yeah. it is rewarding because all of a sudden it's, it's, it, you're, that's a real collaboration, I think. Even though, even though, like, you're the photographer and they might be the client, it, you're on the, kind of, you're, you're on the same page and you're mm -hmm. working together mm -hmm. to yeah. get, to kind of reach their goal. And so, yeah, you're right. Yeah. That always does feel nice. So it's good. It's a good process, but um, it has changed. Yeah, you have to kind of get past that. You know, and part of that is like, it's taken me a long time to to get to that point where sometimes you just have to say no. You know, there's a project or something, and you don't, it doesn't feel right. And instead of like thinking, oh, you know, I need the money or whatever, but no, that's not the point. You know, you, you know, you got to figure out when to say no for a certain thing that's maybe not right. You know, that you're gonna, you know, shoot. So. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, there's a lot of other things I would love to ask you, and maybe we do like a part two later of the, of this. Sure. Um, yeah. I do want to ask one last question, and. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you might have some uh, pearls of wisdom to share for um, some folks that might be interested in um, becoming a photographer. It, whether they, you know, they might be a student, they might be an art student, they might be somebody who's, you know, maybe they've already had their career and they want to kind of get into it. But um, if you were going to give somebody some advice um, on on either the business side or even just being creative, you know, like what would that be? Wow. Well, I think, I mean, I think you have to have, you know, a certain passion about, you know, what you're pursuing. That helps, you know. Um, man, I, you know, it's, <laughs> it's hard to, I'm like, ah, <laughs> think about that. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, you've got to believe in yourself and, have, you know, just be passionate about what you want to do. Uh, there are no rules. There's nothing. There's no wrong way to pursue it. I mean, you know, it's just what works for you. You know, and that's really all that matters. It's about how you feel about it. It's not what everybody else feels about it. You know, uh, you've got to be able to. You know. Right. Just be true to yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Glenn, I really appreciate you coming out today Thanks, and Doc. talking yeah. with me. Um, it's funny, out of all the years that we've known each other, um, a lot of this stuff is, this is like brand new information to me. Some of it I oh, knew, okay. some of it I yeah. didn't, so. Me too, really. Yeah. All right, well, great. <laughs> well, I, I really appreciate it. I'm Todd Birdsong, and thank you for watching this episode of Stage Sessions.